Okay, we'll call together the uh, Raymore Parks and Recreation Board meeting for Tuesday, October 27th, 2020. Can I get a roll call, please? Yes, sir. Member Bartow? Present. Member Casas? Present. Member Collier? Present. Member Harris? Present. Member Hattieshell? Present. Member Manson? Present. Member Supple? Present. Member Troutman? Present. Member Williamson? Present. Okay, we'll stand for the pre Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, next personal appearance, I will call on Superintendent Rulo. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, tonight we have Audrey Collins from Troop 7032. Uh, she wants to come and present to the uh, board um, for a project that she would like to do for her Eagle Scout project. And um, take it away. Um, I'm Audrey with 7032 and um, the project that I would like to do is rebuilding the tennis backboards at Memorial Park. That project would include um, taking the, pres the current ones down, rebuilding it and putting them back up. As of right now, I don't have a date, um, but I will work with Mr. Rulo about one that I could choose. And I'm planning on fundraising and being able to get the supplies through fundraising. Um. That's pretty much it. Uh, you recall uh, last meeting, I believe we had another scout come that who was replacing the one at Recreation Park. The one at Memorial Park was also damaged um, and needed to be replaced. So. Audrey came by and, and uh, this is a great opportunity to uh, get some help and uh, which would be much appreciated. And um, I think it's a great project. Sounds good, any questions for her? No, awesome, we appreciate your help. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Next we'll move on to consent agenda. I need acceptance of the minutes uh, for September 22nd of 2020. I move we accept the uh, park board minutes from September 22nd. Mr. Chairman, I second that motion. Great, any modifications? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote on it. All those in favor? Okay. Uh, eight, four, one abstain. Moving on to staff reports, Director Mustine. Thank you, sir. I will ask Recreation Superintendent Gibbs to give a recreation report. Thank you, sir. Um, and thank you, Chair and members of the board. Uh, you have your October Recreation Facilities Report um, in front of you. A couple things that I did want to highlight. Uh, Center View has been uh, very busy the last month, and we're looking uh, into the future and watching that uh, calendar grow quite a bit, um, which is exciting that that facility is being used um, like it should be uh, in the community and really has a has a, a great reception of that, that facility, so it's pretty exciting to see. Um, as far as programs are going, it, it feels like we don't have as many programs that are going on, but if you look through the report, you'll see that there are quite a few things that are going on still um, on the recreation side and then uh, I think uh, uh, Coordinator uh, Todd Brennan uh, will um, be very excited to, or is very excited to let uh, everybody know that fall sports do end this weekend. Um, and he's uh, had a, a full season of uh, uh, athletics this, this year. Uh, we've seen some uptick a little bit in some of the programs. There's some neighboring communities that aren't having as many of their programs. Um, 
But aside from that, I also think that our programs are superior to some of our neighbors. I think our facilities and our, the organization of our programs uh, really do speak for themselves. Um, and so uh, Coordinator uh, Brennan has done a, a great job. Um, I did meet with uh, Recreation Coordinator uh, um, Corinne Dowd. Uh, we sat down and it was, it was very exciting to, as she started to unfurl her programs for 2021. And when I say it was exciting, she provided me with a tentative list, uh, and this was her first draft of over 140 programs that she would like to talk about. That's pretty exciting. We're not gonna be able to do 140 different programs, but the emphasis on some of the things that we've, we've noticed in the community, um, where we're lacking in some of those uh, programs for the older active adults, we're lacking in some of the programs for the whole family. We're lacking in some of the, uh, the fitness opportunities um, that uh, as we're really looking at, at, at what we can provide, those are some of the things that are really coming up to the top. Outdoor education is another one of those program areas that we're really excited to be able to start um, exploring and, and working with some, um, uh, with some teachers and instructors and other organizations that help provide uh, that uh, um, biology type STEM classes uh, that, uh, that we're seeing in the community. And we're seeing a, uh, more offerings of those because there are so many people that are homeschooling that are using these resources that we're now riding the coattails of as well. So it's uh, uh, pretty cool to be able to, uh, to have some of those programs available to us. Also working with um, uh, our marketing uh, manager, Melissa Harmer, on a couple different projects that will help um, our department lay out our future for the next, um, well, starting now up through the next 18 months as far as the advertising and the marketing needs of the different programs that we need. Um, and whether that's photos, we're shooting videos, we're creating content for our, our website. Um, and for the website, the city is redeveloping the website. Um, and it's, it's gonna be a, a process, uh, several months long. We're in the process right now of looking at some other uh, agencies and, and the, the different types of offerings that they have on their websites to try and mimic what we would like to see um, our website. And I say our as the city of Rainbow's uh, website, um, but then more specifically in parks and recreation, we don't wanna be buried. We don't want people to have to dig and dig and dig through pages. Um, and so this is a perfect opportunity for us to be able to come together, find out what some of the, the best practices are and then be able to implement those in our in our own website um, but we're working on an editorial calendar we have a, a monthly newsletter that goes out it's kind of been going out sporadically but it will we'll get back on track um, and with that we have uh, developed all 12 months the lead topics and and uh, subsequent topics under that as far as content for for the entire calendar year um, and some of those changes that we would like to be able to uh, implement will involve you as well. We would like to showcase our, our board members and introduce to our community and, and make sure that they know who you are in your role, um, as well as the people that, that provide the parks and recreation uh, programs as well. So there'll be some little staff highlights and board member highlights throughout the year that will go out to the community. Um, in addition to you know, projects and programs that are going on uh, in the parks with Steve and his staff, or on the recreation or the athletic side, or in our office at Centerview. So working on a couple different uh, programs with that, that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty exciting. Also working with um, uh, recreation and uh, the athletic sides to going through some calendaring exercises right now um, for usage at the rack. Uh, our requests have just absolutely gone through the roof and we're not sure how to accommodate everybody and our own programs. That's a really awesome program or uh, problem to have right now. We are looking at and we're having to make a balance of making sure that we have uh, good customer satisfaction with our own programs 
versus revenue uh, generation for our, pro for our program. So um, we want to make sure that we have a good stream of revenue that's coming in, but we also want to make sure that we're not pushing out our our programs and um, uh, potentially damaging any of the programs that we already have uh, because we're trying to get outside groups in. So working with that uh, is going to be a, a really nice really nice program as well. Did have a really good meeting with the school district uh, last week um, and they reiterated and this is uh, with the use of their facilities, reiterated how much they really do have a high interest in parks and recreation utilizing their facilities. And um, recognizing that there may be some changes in uh, contracts or how things are charged out or whatever, this year is not, we're not gonna see any changes, but moving forward, we might. So, and that's perfectly normal as, they change up how they do the reservation systems and, and how they uh, offer their uh, facilities, um, especially in times of COVID right now and the different restrictions. Um, we're working really close together and it seems to be a very good working relationship between the two of us. So that is all that I have for my report. If there's any questions. Any questions? Melinda. I actually don't have a question, just a statement. The reason I don't have a question is because I think you did such a great job making sure that everything was very clear and I loved having the participation, you know, numbers in there so we know, you know, what's working and maybe what's not working, but it, I find that interesting. So thank you and I think you did a good job, so. Thank you very much. And you will see um, where we will upgrade and we'll continue to get more of that metric side so you can see how we're doing, not just hear how we're doing, but actually be able to measure how we are doing. Thanks. Brian. Yeah, I got a question how you're gonna, or what your thought process is between us and the school district as winter sports come along and we start moving those facilities inside. I know Cass County is totally different than Jackson County and the other places, but what kind of thought process is going on as far as participation and or parent participation and that that how that's going to work? It, it's it's going to be difficult, <laughs> um, and I and I say that knowing though that we have um, with some of our programs already that we had in the school district very last minute, um, you're aware that uh, we were uh, we had that challenge that parents weren't going to be able to come in and watch. Uh, practices. We did not have any pushback from our community, which really says that there is a level of understanding and, and knowledge that um, it is what it is right now and we're trying to do the best that we can. So we are looking at, and that's, that's where we are going to try to move as many of our uh, uh, competitions, our actual games to the rack so that we can have parents view. We know that we're not going to be able to do all of them, um, or we're going to have to change how we're doing some things. We've not traditionally done any of the games Sunday mornings. Um, that might be a thing. Uh, weekday nights, that might become a thing. So we're looking at a lot of different opportunities so that we can get the parents in to actually watch a game um, because it's difficult when you can't watch them practice, you can't watch them play a game, um, and it's we understand that, we understand that. And so hopefully we'll be able to bring, bring, the, bring the games into our own facilities where that will be able to happen. As a follow-up to that, have we thought about broadcasting the games, making the games available online, streaming for people to view it? What if you got grandparents that don't wanna be at risk or you have somebody who is one of the family members who is quarantined for two weeks? Yeah. So right now we have we've been following what what's happened over in Overland Park, as far as using the CARES dollars to be able to stream from uh, Shields Complex. Um, the school district does have the capabilities uh, in some of their facilities for streaming capability. I don't know anything as far as if it's sub sub subscription or free. It's on YouTube or any of that. But I do know they do have the technology, like at the football stadium, 
there's a chip in the ball and that camera follows the ball. It's not CBS Sports by any means, but it, it at least has, uh, there's an opportunity and we'll work to continue to see if that's something that, that can happen. Um, it's an expensive venture, uh, but I, I do understand the need for it to happen. Yeah, I can follow up a little bit on that as well. Um, right now the approach is as long as we can bring people into our facility, we wanna push that, that being their experience before we do a virtual experience. We have been asked um, to get pricing on what um, a program like that would cost in terms of all of the infrastructure, the equipment, what it would cost to do staffing and training and how that would look. Uh, I don't have high hopes that it will be affordable for us, but um, we have been asked to provide, to come with and provide that to you guys. But uh, right now our first, our goal right now is to get as many people in there as we can because first-hand experience is always gonna be better. And that's what, until we are literally shut down and told not to, that's what we'll push for. Linda. Could you not do even just as something as simple as a Facebook Live, you know, on, from your Facebook page? I mean, granted, you got a lot of different games going on at once, but in certain situations, even? There are opportunities to do that. I would say immediately just an, is we would have to get past the liability aspect because you're, you're publicly displaying at people online and not everybody is willing to do that. So the logistics of getting past that and I haven't been available to us because we haven't offered that in the, the registration form or the liability release form have not included live streaming and live broadcasting. And so we would have to get work through some of those issues. It's not out of the question. It's just, again, I would reiterate, I'm more prone to push the in-person experience than the virtual experience. On that note, then, uh, you know, in my son plays, you know, soccer for Ray Pack. I wouldn't, I didn't sign a release, you know, to be able to do that live or anything like that because, you know, now they're streaming him. But to me, I felt like, well, I gave that whenever I had to sign the release, you know, at the beginning of the year for pictures and stuff like that. Do you guys, because I think you guys do something similar. We do a photo release. Right. But that is different that's than a live do. stream. Well, maybe I do more than that, but <laughs> from my understanding. So I don't know. I don't know if they use the same kind of idea. To I would also say that uh, being enrolled into school is much different than registering for a program. There's there's some different elements of how you are registered and how you represent your school district much more differently than you would do if you just paid your 50 bucks and you played t-ball, you know. There's some differences there. I'm not saying that we can't look into those and see what, what we can uh, overcome. Um, I would again say that um, before I put a lot of effort and resources into providing that, I wanna be kicked out of facilities to where that need is most important at that point. And until we're at that level, I'm still gonna push for in-person experiences because right now, uh, even as a dad and my own kids are participating in there, uh, every time I'm in a gym, I'm thanked for not restricting this and allowing us to come. Now we follow the rules and we, we do social distancing as much as we can. We mandate mask and no pushback whatsoever. People are just happy and pleased to be a part of that. And that's been that way with all of our programs. So I would say right now we're, we're not in that spot yet. But, but we're working towards that so that, because we all know that'll happen, you know, in a moment. So we're, we're working towards that so that we can be prepared if that moment comes. I mean, I'm not actively looking into it now, but I'm not putting it off the table as an option. Right now, I'm more in, in focused on making sure I have facilities to go to before. I, I'm more concerned about having a league than I am about live streaming a league I don't have. I, I would say that's probably where I'm looking at right now. The meeting we had with the school district this week was to ensure that we had the facilities. Had they limited that from us, we'd have a totally different conversation right now. Live streaming wouldn't be an issue. It's what are we gonna do about revenue because we just lost a third of our recreation revenue by not having a basketball. So there's some different hurdles that we gotta overcome before we start attacking other problems. And I'm not saying it's not on in, in our sites. I'm just saying it's not 
top priority at this point yet. Does that help? Does that answer? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Superintendent Gibbs. Director? Thank you, sir. I will ask Superintendent Rulo for a parks report. Thank you. Uh, first, I wanted to apologize. I guess I did not hit the send button um, last week before I left. And um, I'm giving Nathan the benefit of the doubt there. But um, I saw so tonight you are going to get a verbal report from me, and it will probably be the longest report you've ever heard me give. So uh, <clears throat> basically, uh, staff has still been doing spot mowing, um, pretty much done after the snow. Uh, we still have a couple of the native areas that we're going to get down here in the next few weeks. Um, as you heard from one of the Eagle Scouts tonight, we, we now have two Eagle Scout projects that will be going on in the next couple months to fix the backboards for the tennis courts in both parks. Uh, they desperately need um, redone. Uh, the staff has been, um, as, as the flowers have been dying off with the colder nights, we've been pulling them, keeping what we can um, for as long as we can. Uh, sports fields preparations have been slowing down. Um, I think uh, Thursday's our last baseball game. This weekend's our last flag football and soccer was done last week, last weekend. Uh, excuse me. Staff uh, poured some concrete pads. We poured five, I think five or six concrete pads over at TB Hannon Memorial Park. They're for uh, uh, memorial benches that some have been purchased, some are for future. And I think one is for a, uh, a bicycle rack over at TB Hannon. <clears throat> um, we are in the process of getting what we call pretty trash cans for TB Hannon so we don't have the ugly metal ones laying around. Um, those are on order, should be in sometime soon. We'll get those. Um, actually, part of the concrete pads were to, uh, to bolt those to the concrete pad so it's easier to mow around, weed eat around. Um, the staff, where we had uh, staffing meetings um, talking about the ice rink. Uh, the maintenance staff is planning on weather pending um, the week of the 16th ish to. Uh, um, start setting up the rink, um, knowing that it may be too warm to actually put the water in and start freezing at that point, but um, we're at least going to get the, the boards up, get all the pipes in, and, and uh, get it ready to roll. Uh, the park staff also oversaw the, uh, the small project at Hawk Ridge Park where we extended the, um, the uh, uh, drain coming off the street. Uh, I don't know if you, there was a an issue down there where there was a sinkhole and the water was sitting. So we extended the pipe out about 20 feet, rip wrapped it at the ends. Uh, the project was very quick. It looks very nice. We're going to be able to get grass to grow there. Um, and uh, um, I think it's right behind Josh's house. And uh, so it, it's going to look much better and it'll be a bigger area to mow, but it's going to look much cleaner. And um, the park staff. Uh, we had a meeting with the Public Works to go over the snowplow routes. Um, so my guys that are participating with that this year are, are ready to go. And they also, um, we installed new no swimming signs around Johnston Lake out at Hawkridge Park and over at the um, Recreation Park, the little pond there. Um, the last thing that I, that I got on my list is uh, the... Um, I uh, just wanted to bring to, to the board's attention that uh, Boyd Fields, one of my employees, <clears throat> been here for 22 and a half years. Uh, his last day is this Friday. Um, so I just wanted to uh, thank him for everything he's done. Um, I've been here for 12 and a half years. Uh, Boyd is a great employee, and he will be very missed um, here. City Hall, Parks Department, pretty much every department. So uh, uh, we were talking today. A lot of changes since he started um, from from what it was and to what it is now so uh, I'm sure he will be around here and there four or five times a week probably but uh, just wanted to say thank you and I believe Nathan wants to uh, say a couple words about um, about Boyd and then uh, after that I'd be more than happy to answer any questions uh, yeah, as you just witnessed, we're we're gonna miss Boyd. Um, 
we've, had, we've kind of been teasing, we've been calling it the week of Boyd, and he told me that earlier this evening that he should have retired a long time ago if he knew it was gonna be this much fun. So uh, I, I've been here collectively 15 years now, and Boyd was one of the very first people I ever met as soon as I took this job on my first day. Um, and I can tell you from just experience that w when you meet him, when you talk to him, you love him, and there's just, there's no question about that. Uh, I have a, a colleague that kind of grew up in the ranks with me on the Belton side, and then we both became directors, Shane Dewald, when we were working together in the, in the baseball and stuff. Shane and I would share a lot of resources and we would do uh, concessions and help each other build our concession revenues and stuff. And there was one time that uh, he came over and Boyd took him in what we called the old van, the blue van. And Boyd took him and, and basically showed Shane kind of how we stocked and how we did our concessions and stuff. And I had lunch with Shane about two weeks ago and even to this day he asked how Boyd was and how scared he was for his life riding in that van with Boyd that day. <laughs> you, you just, you never, you always remember Boyd. And um, so we as a staff are, we can't be prouder of having worked alongside of him. We can't be happier for the man that he is and uh, the memories we have and just his work ethic and his commitment to the city. It's a, an example to our entire department. So we, um, tomorrow, for those of you who are available, tomorrow from one to three, we're doing a little retirement party at Centerview and I know that not everybody can, that's why we wanted him to come here tonight. So tonight we're actually gonna present him something in, in front of you guys that is from the city department and uh, officially, kick him out and <laughs> and get and get moving so Boyd if you'd come up so uh, what we got is this plaque and since you're old and can't read it I'll read it for you it's it's glass so you'll see right through it but it says uh, March 23rd, 1998 to October 31st, 2020, in recognition of over 22 years of dedicated service, the city of Raymore would like to thank Boyd Fields. Cheerful, dependable, friend to all, happy retirement from the Parks Department. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Well, you always talk, you wanna say something? I mean, this is your shot. It looked like he was kind of looking for some cash. I know. <laughs> Here, have some, have some disinfectant wipes. Can I ask, anybody want to buy some cookies? <laughs> Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. Any board member comments towards Boyd? Anyone? Josh. I'll make a comment. Congratulations and thank you for your service. I, uh, I've met you just a few times, but I see you all over town in a vehicle collecting trash and mowing. Yeah, and mowing the yards and I've, you do a good job. You've always done a really good job and I, I feel like they're really gonna miss you. Chanda. I was just going to say congratulations as well, but Josh kinda stole it from me, so. <laughs> anyway, we do appreciate your service, thank you. Thank you, sir. I do have uh, one more story on him that I'd like to share that just shows kind of the character and the example that he sets. I was, uh, it was one of the work days and I got a text from the director from Grandview, uh, Sue Yerkes, she's the Parks and Rec Director in Grandview. She texted me a picture of Boyd sitting on a mower and I'm thinking, oh great, government employee, you know, coworkers, colleagues making fun of us because we're lazy, right? And so, um, she said she lives in Stonegate and along the Good Parkway Trail. And her text was, I'm so impressed. I've never had an employee, a parks or a government employee pull over and allow me to walk by, walk by. He actually shut the mower off. He was polite, said hi to me and waited till I was out of range before he started the mower again. And she was just super impressed with that. 
And then I'm like, well, yeah, because your staff doesn't do that. That's why, you know, so I let her have it. But uh, that just shows you what kind of person Boyd has been. And it's, he's always been that way from the moment me and Steve have met him. He's been that type of person. So he's, he's truly going to be missed. We're done. You, and that's and all Boyd, you get. Boyd would really be upset if I did take the opportunity of, um, if you guys look real hard, a couple weeks ago he showed us a couple moves and he can do a mean YMCA dance. So <laughs> it is out there and he has done the performance. So check it out. Will this be on display between one and three tomorrow? It probably will be, Excellent. I'm sure of that. What Steve's not telling you is he was in it too. <laughs> Well, that's going to be hard to follow up, but any questions for Superintendent Rulo? Wait, he's telling secrets. None? Thank you, Mr. Rulo. Director. Thank you for allowing us to do that. That uh, means a lot to us, for sure. Um, don't forget tomorrow, if you can make it, one to three, um, Boyd gets one piece of cake and the rest of us get to eat. So that's all he has. That's all he gets. <laughs> and then um, a couple things, um, high level stuff, just to uh, brief you guys on, then we'll get moving on our meeting. Election day is next week, uh, obviously next Tuesday. Um, just a reminder that both Centerview and the RAC are polling places. We have been working with, uh, we, we realize that this election will be very popular. Um, a lot of folks coming out to, to vote. So we have been preparing for that in terms of uh, parking plans and helping assist. We have specific roles, things that we're not, we, we will not interfere with the election process at all. Our, our role is strictly to maintain facilities and to help traffic and flow outside. Uh, police department will also have a presence there and their role is uh, strictly to manage any disturbances. Anything else election related problems, any of that goes to the electoral judges inside. We've been working with Cass County on that. So it, we're taking a big undertaking on this to prepare for it. And I think it will pay off for our residents in the process here in Raymore. So hopefully it, uh, what we're doing makes a difference in that day that it goes smoothly. Um, next is last night, the budget, the FY21 budget officially passed. So our end of year budget that wraps up on Friday and uh, we start our new budget next week on November 1st. So that's that's a big process for staff and uh, we're glad to honestly get that out of the way and, and move on with that. November 16th, um, if you guys will remember on your email, I put a note in there. That's kind of the first of some reminders. You'll start getting things, not maybe not even from me, but from a communications department, even community development. But on November 16th at Centerview at six o'clock, uh, we will be doing a kind of a kickoff to our comprehensive plan. I know we have been talking about this for years and I'm sure Bill is excited and will be one of the first people there because that's what he's wanting. So uh, we will mark it on your calendars. If you're not there, I may FaceTime you wherever you're at just to make sure that you're you're participating in this. Just to let you know, I'll be in Alabama. I knew it. <laughs> I'm going to record it. So November 16th, uh, we will provide food for that. And then uh, the city staff, Mr. Fearborn and, and the community development will kind of give an out, uh, a layout of how the strategic plan and, and how the process is going to work. We have on a staff level completed the strategic plan as an update of what we did in 2016 and then again in 2018. We've updated that, kind of pulled out all the things that we've already done and then reevaluated the goals and, and things to present to you. So November 16th. Finally, I believe it is at, at one work session in City Council, I don't know that it's been announced the date, but in November, the city attorney is on the director, direction of the mayor is going to do a training of boards and commissions. This one will be directed towards the city council. It's just a refresher on uh, protocols, uh, Robert's rule of order, things like that. 
we as a board have had this training with uh, um, um, attorneys are but the mayor has uh, asked that that be provided to all boards and commissions beginning with the city council so once that is done a date to be determined you will also get invited to one of those I believe it will just be in one of our normal work sessions like we've done before but it is being asked to be uh, mandatory attendance for that if at all possible uh, there may be an opportunity that you can attend another boards if you can't make one of ours, but it, I think the idea is to put it on our regular scheduled meeting so you're already re used to attending, but that will be coming up and I will let you know when, when that is finalized. That concludes staff report and happy to answer any questions, sir. Any questions? Chanda. How are you uh, handling the COVID problem situation when you have the dinner on November 16th. The tables will be spaced throughout the, the entire hall of center view, very much like what we did today for our staff luncheon. And I think there's three people per table, uh, masks are required unless you're eating. And that's all I've been briefed on at this point. Any other questions? Nope, thank you, Director. Very good. Next, we'll move into new business. Uh, action item A, adopt a trail policy, Director. Thanks, sir. The adopt a trail policy is one that we've had within our policies for several years now. I believe uh, 2009 was the first time this was introduced and as we move forward with not only the comprehensive plan, but we also move forward, me and my staff move forward with uh, working through these policies for accreditation, like we originally kicked off at the beginning of this year, COVID kind of punted that one a little bit on us, but that doesn't mean we're not still working towards it. Uh, just policy reviews. And so what this is before you denied is that policy. Couple of changes, just upgrade updates, to the policy, what we did, uh, Ms. Greta was kind enough to call all of those that were on file that had uh, uh, trail segments adopted, asked if they were still interested, wanted to keep it, wanted to, and it's about half and half, about 50% of them wanted to stay there and the other 50% were, we don't even live here, please let somebody else. And so it just needed updated and that's what we've done. Um, we've had a lot of new trail segments added, uh, specifically Memorial Park Arboretum, tra the trail in Memorial Park, the loop trail around Hawk Ridge Park, uh, uh, the lake, the, there's just a lot, it's just outdated. So before you tonight is just a review, uh, hopefully you all have reviewed that. I did not include all of the applications and the policy, the, the detail work that the, the customer needs to provide to us, I just gave you the policy because that is what was needing updated. I'm happy to answer any questions if you have. Uh, we do recommend approval that this policy go into effect as updated and our goal is to, beginning in January, really publicize the Adopt-A-Trail program along with another program we'll be giving you um, in November or December, whenever that meeting comes, that will kind of coincide with this. The idea behind it is we want to have a volunteer a community volunteer program with these policies underneath it. Adopt a trail, adopt a spot or adopt a park. Sponsorships, partnerships, so the community has a way to get involved. If somebody comes in, uh, has a business or, or ask us questions, we can say, yeah, we actually have a whole program. What, what are you interested in? And it's lined up. So that is the policy before you. Happy to answer any questions, thank you. Any questions of the director? Hearing none, I will ask for a motion. Oh, Brian. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the Adopt-A-Trail program as presented. I'll second, sorry. Any discussion? Seeing none, we will go ahead and vote on it. All those in favor? Passes unanimously. Hard word for me. Okay, we'll move on to action item B, internship program, director. Thank you, sir. Very much similar to the last agenda item, a policy that we've had in place. 
uh, just needed some refreshing, some updates. We actually did host an intern this past spring uh, following this policy. The pandemic hits, everything shuts down. Uh, everybody pretty much kind of had to punt when they had uh, interns in place and we wanted to make sure we provided a, a location that this young man could complete the requirements, still uh, follow through with his school. Um, outside of that, it functioned very well. We, we really enjoyed having him. Uh, Tyler was his name. He did everything on the recreation side, a tremendous help to our staff, uh, extra hand in terms of uh, work, uh, a body, somebody who can step in and do some things. It was just a good experience. We went through this policy, kind of updated some things to it. Uh, I, I did leave out, like I said before, I left out the application part and those things that uh, I, I wanted just the document itself that represents us. One of the things that we have talked about with not only HR, but internally as our, within our own department is the need to recruit young, degreed, educated professionals that when we're looking for somebody in that role, uh, specifically we've, we've looked and wanted for a long time a horticulturist. Uh, we had Haley there for a while, kind of fit into this role even though she wasn't an intern, she was newly out of school with a degree and, and we really got lucky with her and it worked out very well. We, we re revised this program to mimic that experience that we had on Steve's side and also with Tyler on the recreation side prior to Jimmy's arrival. The, the big thing we wanted to do with this is put some language in there that offered full-time employment if an opportunity was available at the end of the intern. So the idea is we have an open position in the maintenance department. Instead of hiring a full-time, let's bring in an intern, a specialized area, see if it's a good fit, get them some experience, train them the way we want, also help them finish their degree. And if, it's, if it is a good fit, we can offer a full-time position immediately following that. So they go graduate, walk, and then they come back as full-time. It's only there if we want to do that. It's not there every time we do that. So it allows us to have that flexibility and that option. What it really does is allows us to, from an HR standpoint, supplement a vacant s spot, put an intern in there, give them a paid internship, buy us four to five months, train them and see where it goes. If it doesn't work, we're no, we're no worse off. We had some good help. They got some experience, they got their degree, and then we start back over. And that's really the biggest change in here. It's very subtle in the language. You wouldn't, you, unless you knew I put it in there, you would not have even caught that. But uh, that is the internship program. We have every intention of moving forward and if, if possible, doing an intern on both sides, parks and recreation, because we have, for the first time since Boyd's been here, we have the facilities and the capacity to do that. So we wanted a program in place. That concludes staff report, sir. Any questions for the director? Oh, sorry, Josh. Just to clarify, is the intern position, is it a paid position, part-time paid position, or is it just volunteering? And is there like a tuition reimbursement through the city? Can you just speak to that for a second? Yes. It, this particular program can be both. Uh, most interns coming out of college at this point, they're, they're looking for paid positions. Uh, very rarely, unless it's like a practicum or a smaller two to four week, uh, you know, just clinical or what my wife would have called it in the medical field, we called it practicum in our field, but most of the time they're looking for a paid internship. And that's one reason why we don't get very many is because we haven't had the capacity to pay them. Now we have the facilities and the programs that's making enough revenue they can cover themselves and we can offer a paid position. Uh, reimbursement, that's more for full-time employees. If we, somebody wanted to go back to school or go to school, they can apply and fill out uh, th the paperwork and get a tuition reimbursement. We actually have park, one of our park maintenance staff, Gus, who's uh, taking advantage of that as well. So we do have both in place. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, hearing none, I'll ask for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the internship program as presented. Mr. Chairman, I second that motion. Any discussion? 
Seeing none, we'll go ahead and vote. All those in favor of the program? Again, carries unanimously. Like that, Rich? Next, we'll move to public comment. Seeing none, we'll move into board member comments. And I'll start with you, Simon. Any comments? Okay, Josh. I have no comments. Congratulations, Boyd, on your retirement, and um, be sure to come back around sometimes, all right? Chanda. I have nothing. Okay. Bill. Yes, uh, congratulations, Boyd. You're leaving as a young man, that's the time to do it. The more you'll be writing from now on, I'm sure is only your, will be yours. Uh, number, secondly, internship program, I think it's an excellent process, need it, and it will develop future uh, employees for the city, specifically in the Parks Department. We can tap into a, a wealth of young and intelligent minds to come aboard. And last, unfortunately, I won't be here November 16th. I'm sorry, Nathan, but I wish the best on that. I w if I was here, I would be definitely be there. But unfortunately, this the trip to Alabama is not for pleasure. So, again, congratulations, Boyd. Rich. I have none. Melinda. Congratulations. Enjoy your retirement, and uh, thanks again for your service. Ryan. Yeah, just congratulations, Boyd. Um, I've been one of those people on the trail where you have moved over, and, and to, to the, the interesting thing is, you can tell when the guys have learned from somebody like yourself because they do it too. I've had other guys, as I'm walking that trail back on Good Park, uh, do the same things. And you can definitely see that they've had the leadership and that kind of stuff. So not only congratulations, but thank you for passing that stuff on to our current people. Um, it's definitely noticeable without the, throughout the city. So thank you. Brian. Good for you, Boyd. I just wanna say good for you for surviving it all and getting through and, and getting to retirement. Um, I, I've seen you over the years. I haven't really talked to you too much. Uh, you know, a couple of demos you put on, but uh, the way these guys talk about you and the way other people talk about what you do for the city, you're certainly going to be missed. Uh, the good work ethic and the good attitude uh, is always enjoyed and good to have around. Uh, I'd also like to say I'm excited and overwhelmed about all the programs you said Corinne was coming up with for the next calendar year. I, I, I don't know what we're gonna do with all those ideas because I guess we can't implement them all, but uh, that, when you said that number, I couldn't believe it. I don't know what she does with her time, but uh, I also wanna say I'm excited to hear about winter programs still going on, uh, that we're still able to hold that and, and, the, and the city and the county still moving forward and we're able to provide that stuff for people as we hear all the election material going on and all the COVID stuff that going on. I know people are just getting depressed and sad, but it's good we're still able to do uh, positive events for our citizens in, in Raymore and in, in the area. Uh, thanks to everybody else uh, for still doing what you're doing here, staff and, and board for showing up. And then the last thing, it is a question, because uh, I don't have it in front of me, but are we holding meetings regularly again? I know we got a schedule, I think January 1 of what our meetings are, but if we can get a reminder, I would certainly appreciate that. Yeah, I can, I can update, but I would say at this point, we are, as a staff, we're moving forward as every two weeks like we had. The second Tuesday is the work session, the fourth Tuesday is the work session meeting. Uh, based on the calendar, we began in January. So there are certain days like the, the December meeting, we chose not to do that because it always falls on the week of Christmas. I'll update kind of a holiday schedule to, to brief you guys on it. Um, this is kind of the setup that we will have for work sessions and meetings from this point forward. If this building is, is booked, we'll move down toward to center view and kind of do it modified, but this will be the, the setup for the very long future. Yeah, I, I'll write that down and I'll, I'll try to send a reminder. If not, you can remind me to remind you.
And I'll just finish up with uh, thanking Boyd as well, as everybody else has. I think we've touched on everything. Um, when I'm not lazy and I get up in the morning and walk through Rec Park, I always see Boyd. And no matter how far he is, he'll wave, he'll smile. In the 22 years I've been in the city and Boyd working for us that long, um, I've never seen him with a grumpy look on his face. I've never seen, he's always smiling and that's huge. Now, maybe in Steve's office, which I can see, but when he's out in public, you would just not, you'd think he's the happiest man in the world. And I appreciate that certainly out there. Um, staff, uh, again, amazing. I, I second what Brian says, 140. Th that's an employee that we want. That's an employee to come up with ideas that maybe we haven't had. I appreciate the whole staff just constantly pivoting, coming up with new stuff. Um, it just really makes us look good and I appreciate that. Okay, last but not least, we will move into adjournment. I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move we adjourn. I'll second that. All those in favor? Adjourned. <laughs>